Mm-mm. Doesn't say live yet. Well, it says we're live, <laughs> but there's no picture. It does say live. Does it show a picture on your thingy? Yes. Oh, it does. I think we're there. All right. Good enough. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> as long as there's a picture on your end, I'm all right with it. There is. There is. Great. All right. Hi. Happy Hi. fucking Friday. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. It has been a long week. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Long has. week. Um, hold on, I'm sharing so you know how well I multitask at this shit. All right, so I have yeah. to tell you I have to tell you some personal stuff, right? So Okay. <laughs> let me tell you about the fiasco that happened this past week in my life. For those of you who don't know, my stepdad, um, collapse of a heart attack in New York, right? So my mom and I rush up there. We didn't, I didn't have, you know, I was at work, right? So I didn't have any clothes or anything, right? So I meet my mom at our house. I pick up my mom. We take her car and we go to uh, St. Luke's Hospital in uh, New York City, Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're driving around and we can't find a fucking parking spot spot because you know it's new york city so we find this parking garage we pay like some retarded amount of money walk a couple blocks we're looking all over for them st luke's hospital is like three different buildings on three different blocks right so it's like all over the place nobody really knows where everything is it's a fucking disaster we find him we get there you're not allowed to see him um until they clean him up because he had emergency surgery when we get there, we see him. He's lucid a little, um, but not really. They give him a whole bunch of drugs. And he is, right. you know, he's trying to pull the shit out of his mouth. And so mm-hmm. they drug him up so that he can't do any damage to his body. Right. They needed to do some more procedures. So my mom and I left and we decided to go find a hotel. Mm-hmm. We hadn't really known the severity of the situation um, until well into the trip. So we didn't write major reservations or anything. And we pull out of the hotel, I mean the hospital. We Mm -hmm. drive about four blocks and my mom's car breaks down. Nuh-uh. Right. So In New York City. In New York City. Uh, I was pretty sure it was her oil. I walked a couple blocks, maybe like five blocks. I got oil, put oil in her car. It worked fine. We got to the hotel. Everything is whatever, copacetic. We do a bunch of stuff, eat, go see my stepdad, all this other shit. And the next day, I have to take the train home because I'm in my mom's car. And I'm like, all right, I'll... I'll take the subway, which I was really excited about. I actually got on the subway, took the right one. Um, This is like my second time on the subway. The first time was with you. (laughs) I was there for the first. It was an experience. It was my first time, too. Did you see the rats? No. Didn't, no. No. It's always interesting people watching, though, even if there's no little critters running around because, whew, there's a I have no idea where I was going or what I was doing or how I was. I was like, okay, thank God I got up like an hour and a half early before I needed to catch my train. Because I was running around like a white girl from the country in New York City, right? So, <laughs> um, so I get to the train station. Yay, me. I made it to the train station. From Small the subway. Victory. Good job. Right. And I ask a bunch of people, and I find my way to the Amtrak station. Also, yay me. Very excited yeah. about that. I actually got on the correct train. Also exciting. That's definitely it's the little things, I swear. Right. So um, I had, like, I totally get anxiety anytime I'd have to travel just because I always fear, like, I'm going to get on the wrong place. I'm going to go the wrong way. You know, whatever. So... Right. 
I get on the train and we're getting ready to go. And I'm like, yes, I'll get home. I'll go to work for a little bit. I mean, I'm on three hours of sleep, but I'll go and get, get uh, some shit done at work because I really kind of just got up and left. And someone commits suicide on the train tracks and you can't go. Uh-uh. Yeah. So we wait for 45 minutes while the police and the crime scene come and do oh, their wow. thing. We finally get on the road 45 minutes later and I'm telling my aunt who's supposed to be coming to pick me up. I'm like, oh, we're going to be 45 minutes late. All right. So... We get to Trenton, and there oh, is another fucking crime scene on the tracks. <laughs> and we are another 45 minutes late. So now I'm an hour and a half. I'm thinking to myself, like, the last, the, the last 24 hours couldn't have gotten any worse, but it's wow. already bad enough that you've just gone through all this emotional garbage, right? And you just want to fucking get home. And you're like, what's up? Yeah. On? Yeah. So I got. I finally, obviously, made it home. I was an hour and a half late, and uh, it was crazy and insane. But I, I told my mom. I don't think I told anyone. My mom had a seizure. Oh, I did. Um, my mom had a seizure on Sunday. So Sunday and Monday, I spent in the hospital. I went to work Tuesday. Wednesday, I went to work, and I left at like eleven. And was spent the next day and a half at the hospital. <laughs> I was like, everything happens in threes and nobody's fucking dying. <laughs> I was like, I'm not going back to the hospital. God damn it. Yeah. So it's been a long week and I'm drinking. Cheers. Cheers. I have, I put the stuff that you gave me, uh -huh. which I, I put it in the freezer. Ooh. Yeah, but I can't, can't drink Is it, it yet because it's, it's still frozen. frozen. <laughs> I'm trying to thaw it out. That's why I don't have the air conditioning on right now. <laughs> I'm hoping it thaws out a little bit. Because right now, it's got to just totally be like, like this, see, like it's got to totally be alcohol. All this little liquid stuff. Oh, so. at the bottom? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's totally so that's alcohol. That's going to be a shot. Oh, nobody's trying to break into my house. My dog's going off out there. Huh. Hmm. Well, Anyway. So, um, we should probably talk about some news since okay, we're already we late. And, yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's my fault. But it, it was working about 20 minutes before we got on air, and then when we went to go get on air, <laughs> it was not. Right. Crapped out. All right, so preseason started Thursday. Yeah. Preseason football. Uh-huh. I know. I and know. The motherfuckers were kneeling again. Mm hmm. Mm. But what pissed me off about that whole thing was that the NFL put some regulations into place, mm -hmm. but then they reneged. Mm -hmm. They were like, oh, well, hmm. Well, we're not going to quite punish people, not until we can come up with some kind of agreement with the NFL union people, whatever. Anyways. They wussed out. They totally wussed yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah, because yep. they, they thought that people wouldn't do it because of that fine, I'm sure, and they wouldn't have to actually call anybody out on it. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the Eagles, and and I did not watch football all fucking last year, last two years, because of this bullshit. And then I watched the Super Bowl, because I had to, because the Eagles were in it. And they might not be in it again. I had to watch the Super Bowl. Um, actually, a couple of people stopped talking to me, because I watched the Super Bowl, but <laughs> no big loss. People are yeah. retarded. They are retarded, dude. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I just don't get it. You know, like... Whatever. Are you really going to be like that much of a dick that so you don't agree <laughs> with it? Apparently so. Being like, a giant dick then. is obviously the way to go. Mm -hmm. So anyway, and but now I'm not going to get to watch it again this year, it looks like. Because these fuckers are doing it again. 
And there, I mean, some of them are respecting what the NFL put out there. They're staying in a locker room, but they're still, you're right. The fine didn't mean shit. So then this followed up with an article, a couple articles that followed up, but you know, what's fucked up both the articles talking about people disapproving of Trump's uh, response to the NFL protests. The two articles that I found that were like right there, they're both from 2017. And the one has the date on it for September uh, 27th, but the other one doesn't even have a date on it. What? Like, which one? Di- uh huh. What, what articles are you talking about? Um, the first one is a poll. Majority disproves of oh, Trump's response oh. to NFL protests. Right. And that, that's actually from 2017. Um, and then, how do Americans feel about the NFL protest? And that doesn't have a date on it at all. But finally, like somewhere in there, it refers to the current year, which is 2017 at the point of the article. Um, you know, there was a vet that came out, and this is also, I believe, from last year. And I just want to put it back out there, what he said, because it's a widely shared video. It was an African-American Marine Corps veteran uh, dismissed the notion that Trump's condemnation of the national anthem protesters is racial is racially driven. He said it's not a black thing. It's a leftist thing. He then goes on to declare his support for the flag, the national anthem and America. I want you to notice, look very closely. I am black. I am an American of African descent. My great parent, grandparents were slaves and then sharecroppers. Despite his background, the man makes his patriotism clear. Let there be no mistake. I love my country. I donned a Marine Corps uniform for my country. In 1970, I raised my hand and took the oath to the Constitution of the United States that I would preserve, protect, and defend against all enemies, foreign and domestic. He declares his love for the flag and the national anthem before saying empathetically, this is not a black thing. This is a leftist thing. This is a racial obsession thing. And trying to make this into a black-white thing, it's not. The vet tells viewers there are plenty of black people across the country who love our country, love our flag, and who are disgusted by the display of anti-Americanism, of hatred for our country, and simply don't support it. Not one bit. I like this guy. (laughs) I like what he has to say. He goes on to say that uh, without America, well, he sends a direct message to the protesting celebrities, specifically naming Kaepernick, uh, Stephen Curry, and LeBron. You would not be where you are were it not for the wonderful, wonderful free market system of the United States of America. Without America, the man argues professional athletes would not enjoy a life of luxury that consists of mansions, Lamborghinis, and expensive nightclubs. The vet declared that the U.S. has given more hope and opportunity to human beings than any other nation in history. Now, I know last year there was vets that came out on the other side. And I think that the veteran community is as divided as the general population. Um, I find it offensive. I think that I understand you have your right to free speech, but you're doing a job. It's your job to go out there and play football. You're like a fucking clown, basically. Go entertain. Do your thing. You don't have a right to use that as your political stage or spectrum or you you don't. That's that's like me going to work and standing out in front of work with holding a sign that says Trump 2020. Like, I can't do that. Right. I'm at work. Right. You know, that's my opinion. What's your opinion? I agree with you. I mean, I don't think that, um, I agree. I, I don't think that you can mix business and pleasure or should mix business and pleasure. I mean, your, your work environment should be work environment. And I don't think that it's, um, out of the spectrum to ask people to either participate or not at all. Like, at least they came up with a compromise to say, okay, well, you can stay in the locker room. If you're not going to participate, you can stay in the locker room. 
Right. Otherwise, if you're going to come out on the, the field, you're going to have to participate. It's no different than any of the other rules and regulations that an employer has with an employee. Exactly. But the, the NFL, like you spoke about when we first started, doesn't have the balls to tell them. They bitched out. And, or fine them fucking more than you're fining them because that's obviously not working. No, they bitched. They bitched the fuck out. They decided that they weren't going to do it. it. The very first article that we have in here says that the NFL decided to renege and essentially make the or, – or decide later after they've talked to, um, I don't know, whatever, the people who represent the NFL, like their team – the coaches and stuff? No, not the, the coaches. It's like the it would be like the union for the NFL, whoever that oh. fucking is. I forget. I and I can't they meant the owners. <clears throat> well, I wonder if Jimmy Jones will bitch out. Because if I remember correctly, last year, Jimmy Jones came out initially saying that he was gonna prevent his players from protesting and then showed up the first real game on his knees with his players. Now, he was out during before preseason and running that same shit that, you know, he wasn't going to allow his players to do it. So we'll see if, if he holds true to, to that. I mean, they're all bitching out. The owners are bitching out. I mean, this is... Thank you. The players, the NFL Players Union, somebody there said. There you go. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. You the man. <laughs> um, yeah, but, dude, it's like... It's... Nothing other than disrespectful. And it's based off of pure and utter bullshit. Kaepernick, that fucking douchebag who started this whole fucking thing, acting like he was doing it for his, you know, fellow black man, fellow oppressed black man, grew up in an upper middle class white family. Like, he was pretty much a child of privilege compared to, you know, what he's protesting against. He's protesting against something... He never experienced, and not that that means that's the only reason you can protest. You can obviously protest against things you haven't experienced. But the whole thing that it was based off of was this bullshit with Trayvon and fucking Ferguson and New York City and all these thugs that deserved what they fucking got. I mean, the, the fucking kid in Ferguson, he was a piece of shit. He deserved what he got. The dude in New York, he'd right. been well, more numerous star- times, and he had a fucking over heart attack because he's a fat shit. piece of shit. Huh? It all started over that the Black Lives Matter shit. Exactly. So, that's what so I'm, to and say that's all now, based off of bullshit. Right. To say now that it's not a black thing, it's not a... No, it, it started over Black Lives Matter. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's a black-only thing, but it, that's where it originated from, was the Black Lives Matters movement. Mm -hmm. Which was based off of bullshit. Right. It was based off of falsely accusing one police officer. I think it really started in Ferguson, if I'm not... I don't believe it was around with Trayvon. I think it was with Ferguson. What, Freddie Gray, right? Yeah. Um, And they were trying to say that this cop was racist that shot him. In the meantime, the cop was like saving some little black girl from choking and giving her CPR and shit before he went over there to deal with this guy. And then they're saying he had his hands up. Don't shoot. Remember that whole fucking bullshit. And that was all bullshit. He didn't have his hands up going, don't shoot. Like the whole premise that this whole movement that was just fueled by uh, Hollywood and the entertainment industry that whole movement's based off of bullshit. And, and, and how many times did we talk about, like, how they don't actually care about black lives, how they never did anything for Center City children, they never put any, um, an, any movement together to help the children, they never helped the homeless in the Center Cities. I mean, they haven't actually done anything. And they got a lot of fucking money. Right. I mean, you we get, you the, get the person here and there who donates, you know, everybody, everybody in the NFL, anybody who's got a shit ton of money donates places, right? Because you can write off, your, you can write it off on your taxes, whatever, whatever. 
But right. if you're going to stand there on the national anthem and kneel and protest for Black Lives Matter, you sure as shit better get your ass on the gear and go out in fucking Center City and soup kitchens and start dishing out fucking dishes. Make a fucking difference. If you get that responsibility and you're taking on that role, fucking do something good for society with it. Right. You don't just fucking sit back and take them fucking money and run, which is probably pretty much what they did. Probably. So, dude, this is almost like a frozen margarita. This is the best shit ever that you got me. Thank you. You are welcome. (laughs) Best shit ever. Pre-made margaritas. Um, I have the Jose Cuervo, so so it's it's even better. What's that? It's the Jose Cuervo, which is your favorite. Next time we kayak, though, we have so got to do it. Stick it in the freezer before. Because then it'll be slushy. It'll be slushy, and it'll keep the other shit cold in the cooler. Girl, I need to go kayaking so bad. I know. (laughs) I know, but wait, we we got to jump to this article. I know this is totally out of the way, but we got to jump to it because if you've watched our show before, we talked about it. We'll we'll go chill out going down the river in the kayaks. Um, And we've done it a couple times this summer so far, I guess. Should be more. We need to just invest in our own fucking kayaks and throw them in the back of the trucks. But anyway, another story. There was two people, a guy and his daughter who encountered a rabid beaver in Pennsylvania going down the river on their kayaks. Oh, my goodness. Did it try yeah. to, like, attack them or whatever? Yeah. <laughs> no a shit. rabid beaver attacked a dad and a seven-year-old daughter kayaking on the river. Now, you have property that we went to. Beavers can be pissy. Like there They was... are pissy all the time. Yeah. You have, um, like however many lakes you have and one lake you can see this huge beaver hut is it called a hut it's called a hut right yeah uh i mean it is probably like the size of a volkswagen but it's most big. of it's underground too i mean under the water too so what you can see is gigantic what is under the under the water you can't even see it's even it's even bigger right they got it they had a total setup they've been there for a long time yeah, um, and, and I think I have, like, at least four beavers. So any time that you go, like, close to the lake and they're out, they come, they're, like, smacking their tails against yeah. the water. They're like, get the fuck away from my shit. Yeah. They get yeah, all pissy. They, yeah, they're, they're a little vicious. Mm-hmm. And you see the shit that they, they tear down. We were walking through the woods, and they're no joke. They're all over the place. Like, they have family meals on. You Like, you see all these four or five different chew marks on this one log because they're just chilling out, family having a party. <laughs> um, but the smacking of the tails is what I was thinking. So this guy and his daughter encountered a rabid one. That is That insane. went after them. Dude, yeah. they can get up to Talk what, about like being hissy, I guess. <laughs> how, how many pounds do you think one could get up to? 60, 70 pounds? Oh, yeah. I mean, you're talking, I I think bigger ones are probably like 50, 60. Yeah. Yeah, they can get fucking huge. They're they're big rodents. (laughs) So they were um, kayaking in Adams County. A large beaver attacked their their kayak and put up quite a fight. It later turned out to be rabid. Um, he felt something grab his kayak. At first, he thought it was his dog pulling the boat, but it wasn't. It was a big ass crazy beaver. The father wrote in a Facebook post. <laughs> it, it kept trying to bite and get into the kayak after me. I kept beating it with the paddle. This went on for a few minutes. It wouldn't give up. His photos show a beaver jumping out of the water, appearing to bite an oar. The battle only escalated from there. Finally, it swam to the opposite side of the creek and turned and saw Layla in her kayak, who is now 30 yards in front of me. It takes off straight after her. I yelled at her to get to shore. I jumped out of my kayak to help. The beaver made it to her kayak and started to climb onto the back. She was screaming bloody murder. I bet. 
He punched the animal and it fell in the water. <laughs> Lunged back at him. I was punching, kicking, and trying to get him away from it. I ran to the bank where Layla and it followed me, still trying to attack us. The attack continued on land. He started pummeling it with rocks, but it didn't stop. After about five more big rocks um, to the head, it swam a little bit, then came right back. I grabbed a big stick and smacked it on the head five times as hard I, as I could, and the last hit crushed its skull. Aww. But it was I, That makes me feel terrible because it's not the beaver's fault. Yeah, but damn. Could you imagine? No. We ought to be a little bit more attentive when we're lazy rearing it down in the kayaks. That's a good reason to have your gun. Just shoot the fucker in the head. <laughs> Wait, so, I'm still saying we need fucking targets, though, dude. Somebody like, posted if, my ex-wife had a rabbit beaver. <laughs> Holy uh, shit. <laughs> that was great, Bob. Bob is the winner. <laughs> We're going to have Bob on the show because we need some good commentary. Right? <laughs> All right, sorry, back up to, to the real news. I just, we talked, I don't know what got me into that, but, <coughs> oh, kayaking, I had to share. Okay, so um, Space Force <laughs> is our next topic. All right, look, I don't care if the motivation is to beat China. <laughs> I'm all right with attempting to be the, the number one country in the world in everything, and if that means... That we're going to have to beat China. You know, China says they own space. Surprise, surprise. I bet right. that was Kim Jong-un's had something to do with that. Right. Yeah. North Korea's chiming in. <laughs> His dad created space. They can own it. Sure. Yeah, so uh, China says they own space. Good for them. Just kidding. Just like they own, like, what, the, specific, the Pacific Ocean, right? Mm -hmm, where they mm -hmm. put, built their little fake island. Yeah. Yeah, South China Sea. Mm-hmm. So I'm guessing what has driven this into the forefront is that during whatever talks people have had, because it's Russia too, it's not just China. China's the big one because they stole a lot of our information to build the shit that they've got. Um They've been stealing our information for quite a while. Lots of it. Sure. And I'm guessing that this um, has become something that they feel like they need to create because they've gotten wind of it already being created on the other side. Now, is this more of a joke than anything? Or is this like Space, uh, space Wars back when Reagan... When he was going to put lasers in space to shoot down missiles and shit? I don't know. It doesn't sound I like I just want to go. So I'm excited about it either way, really. I don't care. <laughs> I just want to go to space. Yeah. Hang out on Mars. You want to be part of the Space Force? Yeah. Cool. Who doesn't want to be part of the Space Force? I mean, except you. <laughs> Let saying. me know how it goes. Maybe I'll come visit. <laughs> I don't know, dude. It's it's interesting though because they they're talking. I mean, this is like going through the Pentagon now. Um, Mattis wrote some information about it. They want to create another military branch. They want to literally create the sixth military branch for space. In a speech to the Defense Department, he said, this was Pence on Thursday, said that countries such, such as Russia, China, North Korea, um, and Iran are pursuing ways to bring new weapons of war into space itself. As yeah. their actions make it clear, our advers adversaries have transformed space into a war-fighting domain already, and the United States will not shrink from this challenge. Under President Trump's leadership, we will meet it head-on to defend our nation and build a peaceful future here on Earth and in space. 
Trump said last week that he had ordered the Pentagon to begin the process of creating a space force as a new branch of military. Um, President Trump and I are grateful to Secretary Mattis for this department's diligence in preparing this report, and our administration will soon take action to implement these recommendations with the objective of establishing the United States Department of Space Force by 2020. He said that a new position would be created for an assistant secretary of defense for space. Creating a new branch of the military is not a simple process. It will require collaboration, diligence, and above all, leadership. As challenges arise and deadlines approach, there must be someone in charge who can execute, hold others accountable, and be responsible for the results. The Pentagon was in complete agreement with the White House. Holy shit, he said hold others accountable. Imagine that. What? I forget how that works. It's been so long. I didn't think that was a government philosophy. Right? It didn't used to be. Um, In laying out its plans this week for the future of space, the U.S. took a big shot at China's ambitions. The head of the Chinese Lunar Exploration Program recently described space as if it were the South China Sea, an area Beijing has seized with force and militarized after wrecking the environment to build new islands. The U.S. is the only power strong enough to stop Beijing in the South China Sea or in space. Space is full of choke points and strategic location, locations that China could pin down and establish control of. The U.S. is locked in a fight to maintain an edge on China and keep the space free and open. How is space full of fucking choke points? I'm confused. Junk. No, it says choke points like a strategically located something. It's fucking space. It's not like you got to go like, you know, through a little narrow road to go around a corner or something where, you know, it's a choke yeah. point. Yeah, you do. Where? What? I'm there's confused. All, I mean, what do you think? That, there's all kinds of like junk in space and rocks and miscellaneous crap and all the shit that we put up there that's just hanging out there just in space. Right. There's all kinds of things that you got to get around. Hmm. Okay. To me, it, I don't picture it like that. I just picture it like you can fuck. It's just empty. Ultimate. Yeah. Just total space. Like it's not like there's anything there that's gonna get in your fucking way because it's just space. I guess I don't see it. I see it differently than most people. I don't know. I don't understand how their strategic locations doesn't everything just fucking float around out there around the um, earth like when they send up the space shuttle it's just is it avoiding you're telling me it's avoiding all kinds of shit while it's up there and there's like yeah that's why they have to send it out at certain times and certain days and stuff because there's stuff that it has to avoid well somebody should get up there and clean that shit up right we believe we left all kinds of space junk up there. Is the space station still up and running? Mm-hmm. So Ball, Buzz Aldrin thinks it's a good idea. Yes, he's still alive. <laughs> um, sorry. He should be on the Deadpool. He should be on the Deadpool. He's got to be pretty old. Um, we have his Deadpool going, I guess. I mean, still, kind of, a yeah. Deadpool going. Yep, we do. And I have what's my guy's name again? The Bob guy Barker. who did um, the whole giant wheel thing and Bob Barker. Isn't Bob it? Barker, right? He's the Price is Right dude. Price is Right, but he—that yeah. was a giant wheel. You still spun it at yeah, the end, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. At the yeah, for the um, the showcase showdown. <laughs> right. Yeah, Bob Barker's still alive. Bet you didn't yeah. know that one. Yeah. Not for long. He's going to be next in the Deadpool, I swear. <laughs> All right. So let's move on to some politics shit. Oh, politics. Politics. Um, guess who just became U.S. citizens thanks to chain migration? Specific group? No, just two people. Two people. Oh, shit, I don't know. The first lady's parents. Oh. 
Yep. They were Slovenian born. They were sworn in as U.S. citizens Thursday, benefiting from a path to citizenship known as family-based immigration that the president and others have <laughs> have dubbed chain migration. And they don't like chain migration. But luckily, before he's done anything about it, she got her parents in. <laughs> well. And her actual, her, actually, her immigration, it sounds like she had some modeling jobs here before she actually had working papers here. So, yeah, she, she kind of broke the law a little bit, according to this article. But didn't she come over on an H-2B visa? She did. She came over on an EB-1, the elite EB-1 program. That's okay. what her green card was granted under. Gotcha. Because an H-2B uh, lets you, it basically says that you're here to work. This one is a pre preferential program known as the Einstein Visa for immigrants with extraordinary ability who are an outstanding professor or researcher or a multinational executive or manager. Okay. She was, she was a model, though. Yeah, but that doesn't mean... I mean, she speaks like five languages. That's true. That is true. She's not a dumb person. Right. She's only 47. She's born in 70. I didn't realize she was that young. How old is he? Like, he's got to be 70? in the 70s. Late 60s, I think, early 70s. Hmm. Or mid 70s. I don't know. But you know who's old as fuck? Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Did you? 25 years on the bench. Wait, did you see the the latest meme? And it it's a picture of. Um, Abraham Lincoln with General Lee and he, he says something along the lines where he regrets putting her into office, <laughs> into onto the uh, chair or whatever. I just thought it was great. I was like, wow. That's awesome. And she's talking about still going for another like five more years. She still wants to be on the bench for five more years. She's so out of touch with anything. It's a shame. She probably she got a flip phone. <laughs> Rotary. <laughs> right? She's like, what? Mm -hmm. 25 years. All right, so what do you think about Kanye West? What do I think? I'll explain of, what do I things. think about Kanye West? I know you probably don't think about Kanye West, but occasionally he is up in the news, and we have talked about him. So, what's your general opinion of Kanye West? Uh, my general opinion of Kanye West is that he's a douche. Good call. <laughs> I think he's a douche too. I Ever mean, I, I don't really him. know other than that, like how to describe him. He's just a fucking douche. <laughs> Everything he does is douchey. Pretty much. But now he loves Trump. And he was explaining his love to Trump, for Trump, to Jimmy Kimmel. Okay. Now, we have two different articles from two different sources, one extremely left, one extremely right. The okay. one from the extremely left says that he goes silent when Kimmel asked him whether Trump loves brown people or not. They say he just went shocked and went silent. Now, the other article from Fox News says, Kanye West defends his support for Trump. Liberals can't bully me. So there was a shitload of articles saying that when Kanye West, after he said that he supported Trump, when Jimmy Kimmel questioned him about if he was racist or not, Kanye West just went silent, insinuating that West thought he was racist. And the other article was him basically defending his position on why he liked Trump. My problem with this whole thing and continues to be with these fucking douchebag fascist asshats on the left is that 
he's not ever been proven to be a racist individual. He's not also never been proven to be a misogynist bullshit. He had the first woman construction manager in New York City in the 70s or 80s. I want to say 80s, maybe 70s. Um, He has won awards standing next to Rosa Parks and um, Muhammad Ali Uh for his work in the community. Uh Never once have I heard him ever say something racist. And whenever anybody from the left that I'm in a debate with argues about him being a racist and I ask them to give me one example of something that he said, nobody has ever come up with one. So this narrative that he's a racist that constantly is thrown out there on a daily basis really is on my fucking last nerve. He's not a racist, never been a racist, never been proven to be a racist. And they throw out this bullshit about some housing in AC. First of all, AC is a shithole. If you don't know, trust me, it is a shithole. There's a couple cool casinos and that's about it. Um, uh, and they're like run down. Didn't we do a couple of years ago? We did a... Um an article about how how bad off they, they are. Yeah, how bad they were and not making any money and um, what is no, it? They have Start, the one that starts with the B, the Borgata, the Borgata. Bordello. Borgata. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I mean HBO specials about the hookers on the streets. Right. You know, like it, it's it's not a nice resort town, and um. So they, I guess Trump had owned some property and he had gotten some people kicked out. And because those people were black, he was a racist because he got him kicked out. I don't know the, the extenuating circumstances. I don't remember. I know we've talked about it and we talked about it back before because the media was trying to put it out there to prove a point. But you really don't have anything to point to that says that this man's racist. So I find it hard to believe that Kanye, although no, I don't, because Kanye West is a complete douchebag. He's the one with Bush, right, where he said Bush doesn't like black people or something during Hurricane Katrina. That was Kanye, wasn't it? I have no idea. I'm pretty sure it was. I'm pretty sure we did an article about it. But he's, you know, he's just out there saying that shit in Hollywood because he wants attention. That's all. He's he knows if he says something that's going to cause controversy, it's going to put his name back in the spotlight. So way to go, Kanye. Good job. I mean, the fact that he supports Trump is great. It's just like you said, it's it's about the publicity, not necessarily because he loves Trump. Yeah. So there's another article. There was a couple actually about who are Trump supporters and who are Trump opponents? What does what do Trump supporters look like? What makes up a Trump supporter? Like all this stuff that is, um, it's really transparent if you look at it. The intention behind it, it's the whole conquered and divide thing. Is you that know, the Trump, whole people, like let's stereotype everyone type article. Mm-hmm. The people that like Trump fought, fit into these categories of people, none of them, none of which conform to what we think is right. So they're all bad. And if you're one of these people, then, you know, you need to reevaluate your situation because you're wrong. That Have kind of you shit. seen any of the stuff on Candace Owens? Do you know who Candace Owens is? I'm not She's sure. She's a young black conservative. Yes, I know who she is. Okay. And she got, I guess, like, picked on and kicked out of a restaurant recently um, because there was a bunch of protesters and all kinds of shit going on. And she's been doing a bunch of interviews. And and the hypocrisy is astounding, is mm-hmm. really astounding. It's bad. The shit, the narrative, like, it's... And she's like, hold on a second, hold on a second. Am I not black? Because you just mentioned 
black and you just mentioned women am i not a woman am i not black like she goes on and on it just she's like i'm so sick of this narrative and basically puts him in his place but it was crazy they let this guy go on and on and on for like five fucking minutes right and she comes back it's her turn to talk and they continuously cut her off and he's like oh, we're gonna let the professor talk and we're gonna let and she's like no he spoke for five minutes i'm gonna be i'm gonna sit here and answer my question or answer your question and um good for her stan said they called her a racist <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, what? Tell me what hashtag walk away means. Because I thought hashtag walk away. I saw that video and I think I posted that video to you or you posted it to me. One or the other. I got it somewhere about the guy who was, it was a pretty long video, maybe 10 minutes. And it was the liberal who said why he was walking away from the liberal party because of what they become. Do you remember that? It was, it was really, the guy was really intelligent. He had a lot of very valid points, good points. Um, but I see people are putting hashtag walk away, and I'm not really sure that's what I thought. Okay, it is walk away from the Democratic Party. Oh, shit. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad because I was just about to look it up. Mm hmm. That's, well, that was the video I watched, and, and he was he was really good. But they should. Oh, you know, talk about walking away. The Democratic Party, guess who they're fucking walking away from? Who, who do you think is the biggest embarrassment in the Democratic Party right now? There's probably a list of five I think you're going to come out with. Um, okay. Well, I can think of three, and they're all women. Yes, it's a woman. Okay. So is it the black chick? Nope. No? Uh-uh. Nancy Pelosi? Yep, Bob got it right. Yep, Pelosi. The Democratic Party is backing away from Pelosi. So, wait. There is another. Who is the... Ortiz, Pocahontas. Ortiz, whatever. Did you see her interview? Is she? Somebody asks about Nancy Pelosi, and she has absolutely no idea who she is. Mm-mm. Yeah. It's phenomenal. Really? <laughs> it was great. Wow. She was like, um, yeah, she's a great leader. And uh, yeah, and she just has no idea who she is. This is great. I can't believe they're walking away from Nancy Pelosi, but not the other chick, Maxine Waters. Wa right, because she's the one calling for violence and right. shit. Right, that's what I mean. She is the one who's standing saying, you know, make sure you fight so back random. and all this other shit and I'm really surprised that it is even though Nancy Pelosi's fucking crazy batshit crazy batshit crazy definitely I am really surprised that it's her versus Maxine because I feel like Maxine has lost her fucking shit well they already got rid of that bitch who pretended she was black Oh. And then was the DNC leader. Um, what was her name? Uh, I am it was a hyphenated name, wasn't names. it? I'm terrible I'm uh, terrible. Oh, anyways. So, right. So, she um, had, like, Afro curly hair, but it was permed. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. She was the DNC chairman before it mm -hmm. all blew up at the DNC convention. <laughs> right. And she in was Philadelphia. Like spray painting herself or getting like a spray tan or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It was bad. Um, but the other one, uh, Pocahontas, what the fuck is her name? The one who pretended she was an Indian, yeah. Elizabeth Warren. Yeah, there, you guys have a whole lot of, of all good the ones to... that I really could think of that were really embarrassing are all women. Mm hmm. Pocahontas. Well, the no, there's Cory Booker. There's yeah, but that, he doesn't. Um, he really is not as much in the spotlight as he has been. Because he's going to run for president, you said. He's got to back out of the right, spotlight. Right, right. He's got to back out of the spotlight. So all of the current ones who are truly an embarrassment are truly an embarrassment. So what do you think happened to Harry Reid? Because 
I was having a discussion this week, and somebody said that he didn't fall off any, like, equipment, that suicide? somebody beat the shit out of him. <laughs> he was trying like, to commit suicide in a botched suicide that went wrong? Yeah, exactly. They didn't actually do him off, but because he right. stopped, he retired after that. Some hit but they're man saying that it, fucked that you know, shit up. With the Uranium One and all that shit coming close to getting in the news, somebody beat the living shit out of him. Hmm. I don't know. You still have a sticker on the bottom of that glass. Huh? (laughs) So you still have a sticker on the bottom of that glass. I know. Didn't wash off. Um, so yeah, there's, let's see, who do we got here? We got Democratic, uh, Ohio, Ken Harbaugh, I don't know, Peruvel, McCready, O'Connor, Kelly, Kelly, Brendan C., McAdams, Cheryl, Golden, Tucker, Rose, Van Drew, uh, Andy Kim, Joe Cunningham. I don't know who any of these people are, but there's at least, how many people? It said 60? Uh, 51. 51 Democrat candidates and incumbents who won't support minority leader Nancy Pelosi. Wow. Yeah. There's a lot mm. of them. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So what you're saying is she's probably not running for president? No, probably not. Probably not. Damn. I was kind of hoping that she would because she is so fucking crazy. People wouldn't vote for her. You know what, though? With that line of thinking, we are going to get some batshit crazy person in there. Like, we fucking, don't. if What's-His-Face is still alive, Bernie Sanders. You don't think he will be, but if he's still alive, they'll vote that crazy fucking socialist douchebag in. You know they will. I'm prepared. They'll make it happen. <laughs> They've got 100,000 fucking um, illegal immigrants to register between now and 2020. Probably more like 300,000. So who are Trump's supporters and opponents? There's the believers. The believers are President President Trump's staunchest supporters and include almost one in five Americans. Almost one in five Americans are believers. They tend to be on the older side with three in four aged, with three in four aged 45 or over and a third 65 or over. A third are retired. Believers are the least racially diverse group. Over 8 in 10 are white. Geographically, almost half live in the South, a region that went heavily for Trump in the election. Well, if almost half live in the South, then almost half live in the North, right? Yes. So that's kind of just a bullshit matter of fact. I actually have no idea what question you just asked. But I agreed and hope that it was right. Cool. Well, I mean, it was a 50 50 chance, yes or no. And I went with yes because I like positivity. Well, they're trying to paint it. Well, there you go. See, you are a positive person. That's what makes you an A. Um, The sentiment they're saying that. A plus. Oh, sorry. (laughs) You know, easy. Easy. You might be moving down to an A minus. No, um, there. (laughs) Oh, so many people do not know that inside joke, and it's great. (laughs) Okay. So, what they're saying is half of the people that are these eight and ten white supporters of Trump live in the South. That, but that is just a pointless thing to throw out there. Half the people live in the South, half the people live in the North. Okay, that, what does that have to do with anything? What that, does that have to do with the price of tea in China? I don't know, but that was a stupid statement. Like, half it's, of them live in the a, South. Well, then that means the other half live in the North. <laughs> so that's not really a statistic. Um, then there's the conditionals. That are 24%. Conditionals currently support Trump, but they say he has to deliver if they want to keep him, if he wants them to keep him. This group makes up nearly a quarter of the public. They are similar to believers in that 8 out of 10 are white, and geographically, with the similarity size, plural residing in the South, blah, 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 that's the South North bullshit. 
Then there are curious, 17%. The curious are currently against President Trump, but are willing to reconsider him if he does a good job. This group is approximately one-sixth of the country. They are the youngest of the four groups, with 59% under 45, and almost a third under 30. And then there are the resistors, 41%. Resistors strongly, they, who are strongly against President Trump and are by far the largest group, comprising more than 4 in 10 people nationwide. Like the curious, they tend to be racially diverse and young. Over half are under 45, a quarter under 30. People's financial situation spares little on which of the four groups they identify with. So there's believers, conditionals, curious, and resistors. There you go. All righty. So now you know. Figure out where you fall in and that won't get you anywhere. <laughs> won't even get you an ice cream sandwich. Oh, damn. I know, right? <sighs> Hannity slams NSNBC's Rachel Mad- Maddow, or Mad Cow, as I like to call her, for pushing bizarre anti-Trump conspiracy theories and lies. In the opening of his Thursday night show, Sean Hannity slammed NSNBC's Rachel Mad Cow for her peddling of the conspiracy theories and lies. Um, Hannity said last night the host reported that she obtained... Devin Nunez damaging comments made during the GOP fundraiser. Don't expect, by the way, to hear any of this over at Conspiracy TV, MSNBC, with their top left of... (laughs) Wow. This article's hurting my brain. Basically, Hannity called Mad Cow out for peddling a bunch of bullshit, but that's all she does. She is one of these people. And remember... We did articles about she was peddling this. She's got this shocking news all fucking night long. And at the very end, she didn't have anything. She had, like, trash, copies of bills or some shit. Like, she is, she's an entertainer. That's all she is. She's not informative. That entire network is an entertainment network. Mm. MSNBC is a joke. Dude, when they used to have... Before they Jordan were... cracks me up. We need to have him on the show. <laughs> Why? What do you say now? <laughs> He's just saying she's an ugly dude. <laughs> <laughs> she is. She is an ugly dude. But she, um, not she. I don't know. What was I going to say? Fuck. Just... I don't know. But Walter, nobody fucking speaks German. So speak English or move along. Nobody gives a fuck if you're single. I mean, I speak a little bit of German, enough to know that he's saying he's single. (laughs) Good for you. There you go. Congratulations. (laughs) All right. So MSNBC, that's what I was going to say. Back in the day, I don't know if you remember, um, when they had this thing called Vine, something Vine. It was, if you... When the internet first came out, you were really limited, right? You had AOL and the little guy that ran across and the while well, connected. Then it went to um, Yahoo and MSN. Well, MSN, that's turned into MSNBC. And I don't know which came first, the chicken or the egg. But I know that they had these chats that you could comment on the article right in there. It, it was called something Vine. I can't remember what it was. But, dude, I got kicked out of there, like, 20 times. I put – I had to change names. I probably did that, like, 20 times. And then I started putting in, like, fake name number 20. Just, like, I gave up. Um, But – and it was because it was so left-leaning and the mass group of sheep out there that would shut anybody down that had a conservative viewpoint – tells me exactly where this MSN TV, MSNBC came from because it's that same, if you don't have, an, if you, you're not allowed to have an opposing viewpoint. If you don't see where they're coming from and agree with them 100%, then you're the enemy. And they're going to spin everything that they can 
And CNN's the same way, but CNN didn't used to be that bad. Or if it did, I didn't know about it. I didn't know CNN was so drastically left-leaning. I don't think it was 10, 15, 20 years ago. I think it's gotten worse. But we talked about this last week, and, and man, if we could figure out a way to do it, get some fucking neutral, neutral news source that doesn't skew it and put their opinions into everything just the fucking facts that's what the american public wants just the facts not all your bullshit commentary around it or your bias it's so disheartening what has happened to the media and then they get all pissy when trump calls them fake news or says they're enemies of the state well then do your fucking job Report the news. Don't put your bullshit into it. Just tell us the fucking facts of what happened. And I think that's what Sarah Sanders said. Was Is that it? Yeah. She's like, you repeatedly report on things just to cause a rift and just to get people in incite violence or whatever. And, and uh, she said, you attacked me and blah, blah, blah. I think we talked about right. that last week. We did. Week. And, cause, and she had she slammed him good because she was saying about how they were saying she should be choked. She should be harassed every day of her life for the rest of her life. Like things. Why? Because she's the spokesman for the White House? I don't remember the, the right ever. And maybe they did. And I missed it. But I don't remember them ever being so venomous and so you know hateful just for the simple fact of somebody's political side i mean we hated obama but i don't remember him being attacked or anybody else being attacked like everybody that's associated with the trump administration is right mm. <laughs> that's joe friday bill i know who that is Okay, so um, I'm trying to interact a little bit tonight. I know I am too. I, I'm trying to good call job out us some names and stuff. Yeah, yay! Hey, for us. So let's see. There is well, where and do you go? just one you thing I wanted some... to say to Bob, Bobby, um, on it. Uh, he said when the BBC reports on the U.S., it's on point and. We get a lot of our news from the BBC as well as getting it from um, Jews News and a couple of other sources outside of the country because they're more um, they're more on track to of, of the truth and and um, yeah they're more reliable right <laughs> reliable news sources than the stuff going on in the U.S. That's for damn sure and it's pathetic. It's pathetic that we have to get our news from outside sources about our own fucking country. And we can trust that more than we can trust news from our own fucking country. That's, I mean, that's, you know, start of the downfall or a continuation of the downfall. Um, so you want to talk about some science-y stuff? Or do you no. want to keep going along with the um, order we have it? Or politics is you good want to or order whatever. It's fine. We're pretty much done with politics. Um, we've got just miscellaneous shit. Um, there's a drug out there called monkey dust that you probably want to stay away from. Said to leave users feeling like they have the strength of the Incredible Hawk and a zombie-like attraction to eating human faces. The effects oh, of the drug known as monkey dust. Awesome. Yeah, they're as varied as they are extreme. This makes bath salts look like a fucking joke. Right. Um, and now this is, it looks like it's just in the UK right now. There has been some face eating attacks in the US. But the synthetic substance is linked to a spate of violent attacks in the, um, oh no, I s switched that. The synthetic substance linked to the spate of violence attack in the US is beginning to make its presence felt in the UK. So it started here, and now it's in, going in the UK. The summer has seen a, a series of violent and psychotic episodes 
for police and paramedics, with users of the illegal drugs seen leaping from rooftops with and fighting with officers. Monkey Dust also goes by the name MDPV, sometimes labeled as bath salts. They were readily available at the American petrol stations, bookshops, and convenience stores before they were outlawed in 2012 by Barack Obama. The drug usually comes in the form of yellowish-white powder, which can be ingested, injected, and snorted. What does it do? It stops you from feeling pain, leads to hallucinations, and causes severe paranoia. People who com- people and who apparently use it commonly- makes you eat other people's faces. <laughs> people who use it commonly believe they are being chased and often try to climb buildings and lash out at anyone around them. And it has been linked to face-eating attacks. But when any possible highs wear off, such as the Hulk-like strength, users are said to experience unpleasant hangover-like side effects. can have a devastating effect on the nervous system, chest pain, high blood pressure, among potential symptoms. It's a designer drug and can be picked up for as little as two pounds. I don't know how much that is. Um, That pounds is not much different than U.S. dollars. Once hooked, the users are said to experience cravings similar to those who use meth. So, you might want to stay away from that, okay? No okay. monkey dust for you. Damn it. Sorry. It's bad. <sighs> Thanks. Thanks for the, for the warning. Um, are we going to watch Per Sides? It's when like, is that? It's the meteor shower. No, I know. When is that? Tonight? No, no, it's the 12th and the 13th, so uh, it's, what, Sunday and Monday? Sunday night and Monday night? Yeah. It's my dog. I can't hear your dog, but... Um, oh, good, he's knocking on the door. Um, Monday night, I'm going to be in North Dakota. Oh, well, you might be able to get a good view then. Yeah. Because, you know, I don't think there's much um, light pollution there. Hold on a second. Okay. I wanted to yell at him. I didn't want to yell at everybody. (laughs) Oh, okay. (laughs) Um, So listen to this crazy bitch. Okay. She set herself on fire, killing herself and her twins in Northern California. How did she kill her twins while she she set set herself on fire? She set herself on fire inside her home. Oh. They're saying that the suicide resulted in two homicides. The 11-year-old girl was also there and is recovering. They were 14-year-old twins. So I guess she set herself on fire, which in turn set the house on fire, which killed the kids. It doesn't look like... When I first read it, I was thinking, like, she set herself on fire and then grabbed the twins or something and set them on fire. It wasn't doesn't sound like it was that movie made-for-TV kind of shit. I mean, she set herself on fire, so that's kind of made-for-TV. I mean, it's not made for big production, but it's definitely made-for-TV. So, now, here's another fucked-up individual. A <laughs> roofer... Sliced his co-worker's throat with a circular saw. Because he was Dude. being teased. <gasps> Miguel Navarro. <laughs> huh. I guess where Miguel's from. Two guesses. The first one doesn't count. Yeah. And so is the guy who's... He cut... He okay. killed uh, with the circular saw. Israel Velasquez. Oh. Or Velas Flores. Yes. Velasquez. So 24-year-old and a 37-year-old. Yeah. A 24-year-old, uh, let's see. <laughs> so the one guy fell onto the garage roof. And Navarro the continued The guy who cutting. his whole friggin' throat got sliced or what? Yeah. Could you imagine what kind of mess that would make? No, his jugular vein and his carotid artery were both sliced. Yeah, that dude did not live. 
No. Yeah. And that was a bloody oh, mess. Yeah, it would be a mess. I'd be pissed if that was my house. <laughs> Just saying. And the guy, they talked to the guy's wife, and she just spoke Spanish. She didn't speak English. He's being held in jail on a $50,000 bond. Could face up to 40 years in prison. $50,000 bond? Mm -hmm. What do you need, 10% of that? Yeah, it's like five grand. It's nothing. Mm -hmm. It's not that much. No. He'll get back and cross the border the other way. Mm-hmm. It's less traffic that way, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so there might be um, vans taking people back anyway. <laughs> um, if you are in Virginia, Virginia City, there's an epidemic underway. A bad dog flu, basically. Um, any dog that's um, they're like exhibiting real puppy, cis- real puppy uh-huh. flu. What? Real dogs? Real dogs. This is not like the bird flu, that it means something else, right? This is literally for dogs. No, no, this is dogs. a dog flu. They treated 22 dogs for the unknown disease in the past week. Then they contacted other practices to see if they were having the same issue. There's an epidemic underway in the Charlottesville area. It appears to be highly contagious with more than 150 cases seen in the community within the past month. Um, the disease can last for weeks. Uh, uh, what is it? Symptoms of the unknown illness include coughing, sneezing, low-grade fevers, and uh, lethargy. 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 I agree. Sorry, not to, like, interrupt you, but I agree with this guy. He says, let's go with the death penalty for the dude who slashed the other dude's throat. Yeah, like, right after they determine it, too, right out behind the courthouse. Sure, yeah. I mean, obviously, he's guilty. I'm sure there were witnesses. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't really escape the whole, I got pissed off and sliced your throat open, severing your head as it rolled down the... Right? Oops. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, I can only imagine. It was like clean cut, like head rolling off the roof. Anyways, um, so, yeah. I mean, over, done with, bullet. Maybe two, just to make sure you did the job right. Double tap. Let's get it done. Get it done. Yeah. All right, back to your um, meteor shower. Yeah. So this can be viewed in all of the Northeast, right? Yeah. Assuming you have clear skies. Correct. And meteor you're not shower is going to. It's red. It's for two days. Awesome. Twelfth and the thirteenth. Nice. Dude, that'd be an awesome time to be out on the water in a kayak. Yes. Away from all the city lights. That's what sucks. Some of you guys and girls have it made because you're out in the middle of the country, so you don't have the light pollution that we do here. But it's pretty hard. Or it's not hard, but you've got to go out a ways to get away from all the light pollution from, you know, the city. You've got to go out to the middle of the state pretty much. So, um, some chick was shamed for breastfeeding her kid. But how old was the kid? Fucking four. How old are they when they usually stop breastfeeding? Look, so here's my thing. This is what I believe. You should stop breastfeeding your kid when your kid gets teeth. So, in my opinion... As a mother, as a scientist, whatever. If your kid has teeth, that means your kid is ready to start grinding food and processing the body's processing it, right? That's what teeth are for. Our human bodies have are amazing things. It does stuff on its own all the time. Your kid gets teeth, and that is the sign ah, that your kid should eat big kid food. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so four years old, your kid definitely has fucking teeth, dude. And I know, I know, I can only imagine that it's 
Very embarrassing to be shamed for breastfeeding your kid, but come the fuck on. Four? Four seems a little old to me. Four is... No. No. That seems a little weird. She says that she nursed both of her daughters longer than what society considers appropriate. To me, like, no more than one year old are you, is it appropriate. At four, you're like three years beyond the appropriate time. My plan was to nurse children to full term until they chose to wean on their own. I ended up tandem nursing for two and a half years until my oldest was four and a half and she weaned. My youngest is three and a half and is still happily nursing a couple of times a day. She'll wean when she's good and ready. I mean, that's fine. Whatever. She's your kid and, you know, I don't know. This is probably part of the whole natural selection deal, but <laughs> I'm just saying that, um, no, no, I agree. I'm, I'm not, I'm not feeling that. I think it's a little old. No, it's a lot old. It's a lot old. Your kids ready and processing food. There's no reason for breast milk. Breast milk is to help your baby grow and get fat. That's what breast milk is for. And build their immune system up too, right? right? Yeah, sure. But that's they're help they're getting help to grow, they're getting help to get weight, go it's very fatty. Yeah. No. No. Mm -mm. So, um why would a guy walk around with his nuts out? A woman walks around with her breastfeeding because it's for food. Nobody's sucking milk out of people's nuts, all right? No. No, it's not appropriate. <laughs> Let's just... The reason it's appropriate for women to breastfeed is because she's fucking feeding her kid. <laughs> yeah, it's not quite the same thing. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, oh, God. Natural selection. Where the hell is natural selection? <laughs> what's, the, what's the next one? Oh, yeah, I don't know. Um, uh, sorry. Sorry. I was that's all right. involved. I know. You're talking about nuts being out and... <laughs> I just... uh, okay, so one of the largest banks, one of the largest banks, issued a lar an alarming warning that Earth is running out of the resources to, s to sustain life. What's a bank got to do with that? Right. One of the world's largest banks says the planet is running out of resources and warns that neither governments nor companies are prepared for climate change. But the banks are. Yeah. Yeah. Because they have all your fucking money. Right. They're raping you of your money and they're loaning it to other people and your money is not really yours. Just in <laughs> case you didn't know. Just in case you had any doubt. Uh, the world has spent its entire bad. natural resource budget <coughs> for the year by August 1st. A group of analysis at HSBC said the note that it cited research from... So basically... Because they used all of their money, this bank is coming out and saying that, oh, the sky is falling. Everybody run. Ah. Okay. Right. In our opinion, these findings and events show that many businesses and governments are not adequately prepared for climate impacts, nor are they using the natural resources efficiently. Dun, dun, dun. We're all going to die. Guess what? You're all going to die. die anyways. It's all right. You'll be okay. Go in your pe go in your pillow for it. All right. So what's mm. this one? 
Um, Coroners sent letters to doctors whose patients died of opioid, opioid overdoses. Doctors' habits quickly change. Oh, what do you know? Everybody's dying of drug overdoses. And they're all coming from doctors. Because that's how people get truly addicted to heroin. Is because they are addicted to opioids and then no longer can use them. Because our doctors are giving out drugs to people who... Yeah. Way too many drugs. We got way too many drugs going on here. Because they're getting kickbacks. kickbacks. Exactly. Money. So why wouldn't they? Money drives they everything. Which I find that I find this article interesting because I really don't see doctors as having the um I don't see them becoming that upset about it. I mean I don't think I'm surprised that this says that they have lowered their um prescription amounts, you know, that they're, they're cutting back on prescribing this shit because it's got to only be recently because heroin and the drug epidemic has been truly in our news for like maybe the last six months, mm, possibly a year, but not truly. We haven't talked a whole lot about the heroin and drug epidemic until just recently. And it, some of it did have to do with um, the president came out with a stance on the opioids, and you know that was on his platform. So could he possibly get some credit for that? Maybe. I don't think that the doctors, out of the kindness of their hearts, are prescribing less of this drug. Oh, probably not. I find that they're just, hard to believe. They're just scared. Yeah, I agree. They're scared that they're going to get tagged with the with it. But but that's where it came from. It's not like a natural kind of thing. It's not like pot or coke or anything. I mean, th this is a synthetic, a created opioid that. Well, I guess it's from opium, right? There's. I don't think it's all chemical. I think there's got to be some kind of. No. Is it all chemical? Yeah. Oxycontin and oxycodone yeah. and all that shit. Yeah. There's no actual opium in it. No. No. Opium. It's just an opioid. But, but yeah, I mean, that's been It just a has trend. the same effects as opiates. Your body, right. Like, and because it, it um, <clears throat> excuse me, it blocks your pain receptors or something, right? Right. Um, but this has been an ongoing problem. I've seen it for like probably 10 years or so. The opioids and, sure, and people but, being addicted to this right, shit. Right, right. But it hasn't been like in the news as a big deal. Right. It just kind of was swept under the rug. Sure. Because it, it's legal. They're legal drugs. Exactly. Heroin is not. Used to be. But not anymore. Remember we've seen those old um, advertisements? For lots with, like, of things. Like... Um, like tampons used to have in the eight, uh, late 1800s, I guess, they used to have opium in it for menstrual really? period. Or I mean, for menstrual uh, cramps and stuff and oh, all shit. kinds of other stuff in it, too. But um, oh, and cough medicine. Yeah. Coca-Cola. You really got a zing from that. <laughs> Forget the caffeine. Clearly, Hardcore. I was born in the wrong era. Right. I was. Uh, I want some opium in my tampons. <laughs> Damn it! It's gonna help with the fucking cramps. I'm all for that right, shit too. Yeah, exactly. Hell yeah. Screw this time You guys shit. have no fucking idea. Let me just tell you, you guys have it fucking easy. Until that's that's why you cannot get pregnant and give birth because you'd be in an aquarium like a little bitch. You wouldn't be able to handle it. We I think women definitely have a higher tol uh, pain tolerance. Pain to it's actually um, scientifically proven that women have higher woo, pain woo. tolerance. Say, say, because we're badass. Just saying. A plus. Mhm. Mm plus. <laughs> <laughs> um. 
So we have some international news. Um, just fucked up people around the globe, pretty much, is what this news tells me. I'm going to just fly through the headlines, I guess. Um, the Are we done? We're done with the science stuff, right? Oh, uh, yeah, I think so. Sure. Except for the sharks. We didn't talk about sharks. Did I skip the sharks? You skipped the sharks. God damn it. And it's like Shark Week, too. We can't Is it Shark sharks. Week? I think it is. <gasps> well, I don't know if it is, but I had the TV on when I came home because I leave the TV on during the day on Animal Planet for my dog while I go to work. Sure. So the TV was on when I came home, and Cash Cab was on. Okay. And they were saying it was Shark Week was July 28th or something, I guess. So actually, it might have been like a rerun. Oh. We might be past Shark Week now. But anyway... um. They're saying if you are in somewhere where there might be sharks in the water, they are more likely to bite humans after a heavy rain. Well, yeah, because it's all murky. They can't see. They're just like, there's something giant and black in the water, and you look like you could be food. Mm hmm. And that's exactly what it is. It's because not things the get all churned fault. up. Just yep. stop swimming in the sharks. Yep. That's what they're saying, though. The, the cloudy water has been linked to the shark bites because it's all... It, this was North Carolina they were uh, talking about. Um, it only makes but, sense. They can't... They don't... They have really shitty eyesight to begin with. They, yeah, they don't have really good eyesight. They rely on their sense of smell. So they've got really shitty eyesight and... Already to boot, and then you add some a bunch of murky water, and then you look like a giant seal in the water because you know you're dark and and probably not a good idea to have your period. Yeah, because then you're like already bleeding. Right. So, so now you're like a wounded walrus. I wonder if women get bit more often than men. I don't know. Be an interesting factoid to find out. It would out. be an interesting factoid. I'm have to it look it up be. later. I do not know. Are you looking that up? I can, if you're going to talk about international news. All right, I will. I can do that. So, let's talk about the fucked up people in the rest of the world, since yeah, we just got done talking about the fucked up people in America. Okay. Um, the UN says it has credible reports that China holds a million you got hers. In secret camps, uh, we let's just call them Muslims. Oh, okay. So a, a UN human rights panel said Friday that it had received it had received many credible reports that one million ethnic Muslims are in China and held in what resembles a massive internment camp that is shrouded in secrecy. A member of the UN hold committee on, on the on. Olymp- sorry, are you a woman? Good news. You're probably not going to get bitten by a shark. In fact, really? nearly every single person ever bitten by a shark in Australia and around the world since records begun has been a man. Well, okay, but they did make a movie about the one chick that was the surfer that got her arm bit off. It, it says nearly. Yeah, well, there's your one. <laughs> there's your one percent. That's interesting, though. Yeah, I wonder why that a, is. Um, there have been 1,132 record shark attacks since 1941. Of these, 968 involved men. Only 64 involved women. That's not a whole lot of shark attacks. Uh, that's just in Australia. Hmm. But on the grand scale, that's not a lot. No. Sharks um, get it right most of the time. <laughs> right, so don't don't be shark hate. Right. Don't be shark hater. So they're anyway, back to the, anyway. the you don't really I know you don't give a shit if the Chinese have a bunch of Muslims in a camp anyway. You're probably I mean, like, I think it's hilarious that the Chinese have a bunch of Muslims <laughs> in a camp. I mean, if the Chinese are really good for anything, it's not allowing that shit. <laughs> To go on. They really don't. Like, <coughs> none no, don't. of the Asian countries are really tolerant of Muslims at all, whatsoever. 
You're right. They know They better. don't allow, like, <coughs> I think it's Japan has all of these rules, like, they don't allow um, Muslims to migrate unless they, um, they don't allow the Quran to be delivered to their country if it's in um, a different language. They don't allow all kinds of shit. There's no mosques. It's like a, <laughs> they, they have a really tight grip on that whole Muslim thing. Yeah. I, I want to say it's Japan. Well, they're saying that there is an estimated 2 million Uyghurs and Muslim minorities. I don't know what that is. U-I-G-H-U-R-S. And Muslim minorities. So they're separating it out. So I don't really know what that is, but um, that they were forced into political camps for indoctrination. Hmm. We, we are deeply concerned at... We are deeply concerned at many numerous incredible reports that we have received that in the name of combating religious extremism and maintaining social stability, China has changed the autonomous region into something that resembles a mass internship camp that is shrouded in secretly, a sort of a no-rights zone. Hmm. Fifty officials from China made no comment on the remarks. <laughs> Wow. So, yeah, there's that. Panelists also raised the reports of mistreatment of the Tibetans. Tibetans. Tibet. Tibetans. I don't know how you say those people's name, but the locals of Tibet. You all right, buddy? Um, Including inadequate use of Tibetan language in the classroom and and at court proceedings. So, yeah, China's pretty much taking control um then in canada there was four people killed in a shooting two out of the four were cops in russia somebody well in washington russia was brazen enough to kill with a chemical weapon on british soil could it happen in the united states heightened concern spurred by the poisoning of the russian spy in salisbury england is prompting u.s national security officials to consider seriously the prospect of a similar attack uh, they're just getting ready for it um then there's a a viral video of a dude who beat his wife and then she mysteriously fell to her death and then he went out, drug her back up to her body, back up to the apartment, and went out and cleaned the blood up. All on video cameras from different spots within the um, apartment building. What a dumbass. Mm-hmm. What a dumbass. I saw another one this week of a guy who threw his mother off a roof. I saw one of this guy who beat his, like, one-month-old kid to death punched him in his face wow. while the mom went upstairs to take a nap because she'd been dealing with the baby and the baby wouldn't stop crying and he punched the baby in the face and, and killed it yeah there was such great brain damage that the baby died mm. what fucking people like, we're again natural selection so then there was three pedophiles executed, hanged for raping and killing a 10-year-old boy. Now, what surprised me is this was in... Where the fuck was this? This was in some place where they fucking... Oh, M- Miramar. The city of Mecca. Wait, no, that can't be fucking right. Where is this at? Because they fucking do it all the time. They rape those little fucking kids. And this says three pedophiles are executed, hanged for raping and killing a 10-year-old boy. Three men were executed publicly. They were shot in the heart five times in front of a crowd. And they, oh, it's in Yemen. In Yemen. Yeah, so, like, this is. Oh, oh. sorry, sorry, you're right. Um, Kevin Anderson said 
that guy who beat his baby. Uh huh. The reason that I saw that article was because he was found dead in his his cell. He's oh, only good. been in there for a month. Good. Yep, social justice. Um, so Brazil murder rate breaks record with more than sixty thousand killed last year. Jeez. And um, Nicaragua arbitrary arrests are now the new norm and abuse. There's been 2,000 people arrested in Nicaragua, nearly four months of unrest and official crackdown. At least 400 be- people are believed to still be hidden in jails, prisons, and police stations. So, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of unrest rolling around the country. But never fear, because if you eat crickets, you're going to live to see a whole lot more of it. Did you like because that segue? they're high in protein. Yeah. Um, yeah <laughs> they no. are. No. They are high in protein. I believe you, but no. I'm not eating a cricket. All bugs are high Jimmy in protein. Cricket. Look, Pinocchio, you could survive off of just eating bugs. Seriously. No. If you're in a shit-hits-the-fan scenario and you need to survive, there's like... A hundred million times more bugs than there are <laughs> humans. You could live off of eating bugs. No. But you could. Okay, okay, okay. But I think I would I would be almost starving before I would resort to eating bugs. I'm not a bug fan. Look, you can make, like, flour out of crickets. And you, like, make cricket bread. Come on. It's like... I don't want to eat that stuff. You wouldn't even know. I would make it. You wouldn't even know. If you don't tell me, I would probably be okay. Cattails. We'll go get some cattails. We'll get some crickets. We'll make some good bread. Mm, It'll be fine. Okay. All right. I'll take your word for it. (laughs) But it improves your gut health, according to a new study. Eating crickets. Ugh. Um, thieves, back to sharks Thieves snatched a shark from the San Antonio Aquarium And wheeled it out in the baby carriage Aw, did it die? This is a couple weeks old No, I don't think so Good The shark is alive and well and on its way back to the aquarium No, and they got the suspect who took him But yeah, they just decided to pick him up and stick him in a Who puts their shark in a baby carriage? Who steals one from an aquarium? But who puts it in a baby carriage? <laughs> well, nobody obviously it worked. They got Where's it out. Where's the tank? Right. Yeah. Well, they're, they're people probably are just thinking, look a little you less change suspect. your baby. You'd look a little less suspect if you put it in a tank and, like, wheeled it out like you're supposed to. You're just like, <laughs> oh, yeah. We're just doing maintenance. Uh-huh. He's getting a bath today. Scrub behind the ears. And then on the uh, ears. I'm just kidding. So, eating this fish could give you three days of nasty LSD-like hallucinations. Woo! Which kind is that? Blowfish. No. Um, yeah, that's good because it'll the kill The small you. Inconspicu- inconspicuous fish holds a nasty secret. Inconspicuous. Thank there you. you go. Holds a nasty secret. The small golden striped sea bream, bream lives throughout the Mediterranean African East Coast. Though it was spotted as far Damn. north as Britain, it's also called the dreamfish or the salma porgy. The dreamfish. Okay. Dreamfish. The dreamfish. LSD. Got it. High on fish. Okay. You say that word. Ichthyoalioinotoxism. <laughs> What, is that what makes you high? Mm-hmm. I can't eat Or any hallucinogenic fish, fish inebri- inebriation comes from eating certain species of fish, typically from around the tropics area. This one that this little fishy has is associated with this extremely strong, vivid hallucinations and can be quite dangerous. It's unclear if the fish themselves contain the toxins or they somehow pick it up through their diet. 
So yeah, there you go. Fishies. Yeah. No fish for me. No fish for you. Yeah. So people are going to the store uh-huh. and buying clothes uh-huh. to post Instagram pictures. Uh-huh. And then they're taking the clothes back. What? Yeah, they're trying to look really cool. So they go to the store. They buy some nice outfit. Okay. Start take all their little Instagram pictures. And then they go return the outfit. Almost one in ten UK shoppers do this. Wow. This why don't you just take the out, why don't you just take the picture while you're in like the dressing room? Well, because you know, you want to look all cool, sitting at a bar, having a drink. Something or like that. Why don't you just, I mean, if you want to look cool, then why wouldn't you just keep the outfit? I don't know. Well, okay. because they can't afford it. They just want to look like they can. Oh, oh, so it's about image, I guess, then? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's Got all it. about image. Right. Well, thank God I'm not some college kid on a college budget. So you want to know three ways of cooking bacon? In the oven. Yep. On the stove top? Nope. What? I cook that's mine in a pan. Them. That's how I cook my bacon, too. Yeah. Right. So but that's nope. not one of the ones that you're supposed to cook bacon. Okay. So, that this person um, tried. Microwave? Yep. Yeah. Have you had microwave bacon? It's not very good. No, and but they give you a those bacon little toaster. Tray Have Aren't you seen that? Tray- what? Have you seen the bacon toaster? No. Yes. Yes, <laughs> I think thing. I have. Like put, you put, the, you put it, it over, like, the rack, and then you stick it in the toaster? Uh-huh. Bacon toaster. You got to love a bacon toaster. You cannot go wrong with a bacon toaster, except for it's got to be a greasy mess at the bottom of it. Um, right. And a waffle iron. Oh. My, my waffle iron is Star Wars. It's... A picture of Darth Vader's head. Nice. Mask. So if you come to my house and have waffles, you'll get a Darth Vader waffle. You're on the dark side. All your stuff's dark side. It is the dark side. It is the dark side. Yeah. I don't think I've got uh, maybe one thing that is not, two things that are not the dark side. (laughs) So yeah, waffle iron, I found that to be kind of odd. Um, there's pros and cons of using images of deceased people on screen. What? On screen or on screen? On screen. Like Carrie Fisher's in the new Star Wars. Oh. The recent announcement of footage of late actor Carrie Fisher in the upcoming Star Wars film has resonated a debate about the ethics of using unused images or reconstructed footage of deceased entertainers in movies, in movies, television, and commercials, something that is only likely to increase as imaging techniques improve. Oh, The Onion takes a look at the pros and cons of using images and footage. Well, The Onion is a satirical, if you don't know what The Onion is, satirical outlet. But anyway, pro, who cares? They're dead. Slightly less creepy than exhuming their bodies and propping them up like marionettes. Marionettes. Paul Walker is back. Enlarges pool of white actors available for roles. We are momentarily entertained. Cons. Slippery slope could lead to digitally manipulating other aspects of film like scenery or explosions. Really distracts from the romance of sex scenes. Some of them probably have several good years of life left. Johnny Depp will never, ever go away. Yeah, that's stupid. Sorry. My bad. That was a stupid, stupid article. So, are we going to wrap it up then? Um, sure. We'll wrap it up on that stupid, stupid article. <laughs> Yo, on Johnny Depp never going away. To, we, do have to, we do have to talk about somebody, I think. I think we have a sponsor again. Oh, Grunt Style. Yes. Grunt, Grunt Style. Style. We're getting Grunt Style t-shirts because yes. we are awesome like that, and we're sponsored by Grunt Style. 
Yeah, Yay. so check them out. Um, you can get the information on VRS uh, website and links to their websites. They've got some really cool gear. And check out all the other shows that are on. Um, and thank you for hanging with us. We tried to talk more. Hopefully we did better. Um, yes. We tried to talk a little oh, more this hi, time. Oh, hi, Trevor. Hi, Trev. So I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. And yes. I, I hope the best for your uh, your stepfather. That he's as better. Um, and, yeah, we will not be here next week. Yes. Because we are both out of town. Right. So... And I'm not making any promises for the following week, but we might be here. Okay. So we'll see. We, we should be back before the end of this end of the uh, month. But have a great week weekend, and we out. We out like a fat kid in dodgeball. <laughs> <laughs>